Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is uh, Kenma from Vulcan, formerly known as Vulcan. We're going as xd.gg now. I wanted to take a take time to make a vlog about my my whole time that I've spent on the team and how how everything's gone for the last for the first LCS season, so people can know what I've done myself and what I've done as a coach for the team. So I could explain a little bit a little bit about it to everybody. Before before the team qualified for the team, I didn't know Muffin or Smithy very well. Smithy subbed for us a little bit when I was in Gosu, and Mancloud was always playing competitively when I was playing competitively, so I knew him from that. But like as in in real life, we didn't know each other. The only ones that I knew on the team were obviously Zuna because he's my brother, and I knew Psycho Sid because he was on CLG Black with Zuna. Psycho Sid actually went to our house before a week or two before LCS and did some training with Zuna there and and I think that was the second time he actually came to my place so I've known I've known him for a while and I would I would just at that time I was kind of back backseat gaming coaching Zuna and and Psycho Sid but I was just doing it to help them out because it was my brother and my friend I wasn't really doing it as a professional job or anything they didn't have the money to hire me anyway and I was just, originally I was planning to join the team as a sub once they went into the LCS. That's why I was helping them in the first place. Because I hadn't played the game competitively for about maybe even six months before the LCS started. So I'd, I'd stopped playing. It that I hadn't played at all. I, w I still kept up with the game though because Zuna played it. And I still watched the OGN and all of, uh, all of Zuna's games on CLG Black and stuff like that. So I was still well informed with the game and could help them out as much as I could. Let's see. Once as soon as so as soon as I joined the team as the coach, the first the first things that I had to do were we had to find a car and a house. We had to find a car and a house for the team. So literally, the first the first um week of LCS, I wasn't able to go to the LCS because the owner said that they would pay for my. The owner said they'd pay for my flight and reimburse me, but I hadn't got paid yet, so I didn't even have money to to pay for uh, an airplane flight, and I didn't want to, this whole thing was new, so I didn't want to waste money on an airplane flight before I even knew anything was set in stone, and so I missed the first week, and of course, <clears throat> well, after the first week, I had to, f I had to find a car and a house, so I just checked Craigslist, and some like Trulia, and a lot of the house places, and I, me, and my twin brother, and my twin brother drove us down to Cali, and I went with Zuna and Muffin, and we just went house hunting, and we just, we looked at about four or five houses in two days, and we picked the best one out of them, and that's the house that we're currently living in in La Mirada. Then, as soon as I got back from that trip, I had to find a team car for the, for the team, and I found that, like, I found a, some used Civic for the team, and we, I got that in, like, a day. So, before I even moved out to, to the house, I already went house hunting and bought a car, and I've never done any of that stuff before, so it was a good learning experience for me. And so, after, after, we, uh, after we moved in, people were asking me, they were like, uh, do you care if, if Pluto moves in with us? He's cool, I, I, and I didn't, I didn't know him in person, I knew him, I knew him as that red-haired guy that was with curse and did some curse stuff but it it turned out to be fine and he was he was a really cool guy to live with and i consider him a friend to this day so it was pretty cool getting to know him and then like i was like i was saying earlier in the first week of the lcs i wasn't able to go and we started out on five in the first split it wasn't the it wasn't the best of feelings at that point i was just like i i just didn't know what to think i was i was just like let's just make it at that point, I think everyone on my team was just like, let's make it back into the LCS. We'd be happy with that. And then, I don't know. It, it was a really bad feeling starting out on 5, especially when I couldn't be there the first week to work with the guys. And then, after that, we, we started... Once I finally got situated in the house and we actually started scrimming as 5 sitting together, we started doing we started doing better. And we won our first game and then we kept on winning more. So, it, it was a good feeling. During the, I don't I don't remember exactly which week it was in the first split, but we had 
we had an MLG in, I think it was Texas. And then I wasn't, I actually wasn't able to go to that either because the, the plane ticket was like going to be like 500 there and back or something. And I didn't, after paying, after paying back my brother for the money that I borrowed from him to move out to California and then, and then all their expenses, I didn't have any money to even front for that ticket. And the, the team didn't want to front for that ticket. They just said, pay for it yourself and I'll pay you back. And I couldn't do that at the time. I wasn't financially able to do that at the time. So I missed out on that MLG. And then one, th one thing I wanted to talk about was during the first split and the second split is that the Riot really has, they have no love for coaches at all. They don't, with their format, they don't even want coaches, it seems. Like, they don't they don't provide for coaches in the salary for the team. They don't provide for coaches in any of the, whenever you travel anywhere, they don't give the coaches money for traveling. They don't give the coaches a spot in a room or anything like that. They've been, they've been very lenient with me with, like, letting me into the, I, I go to, I go with the team every week to the LCS studio. I'm the only, I think I'm the only person that's not a manager. It's part of a team that actually does that besides maybe the TSM camera guy. So, so everyone, all the right people should, they know me. And the first, the whole first split, our, uh, our manager gnome didn't actually live in the same state as us. So I was the one going to the, I was the one having to deal with stuff at the studio that needed to be dealt with at the time that she wasn't physically able to do. So I had a lot of stuff to do during the first split and I, it was just, it was really, it's, it's still to this day frustrating because they just, they just don't, I don't know. I don't know if they have, I've heard that they had future plans of um, helping coaches and, and stuff, but I, to this day, I haven't really heard that they've done anything different than I haven't heard that they're planning to do anything different. So kind of sucks, but thankfully my team values me and and my owner values me and I'm glad I'm glad where I'm at and I love my job so it's cool. Let's talk about on the, on the first split we had we had uh just we had a lot of troubles with the car, the house and with the, like I said with the manager being in a different state and whatnot. And then at the end of the, we were just not getting the performance that we want. So when we when the first time we actually met the owners I don't remember what it was, but the, the the that first split was already it was near the end, maybe two or three weeks before the end of the split, and that was the first time we actually met one of our owners in real life, because they they were taking more of a a backseat type uh, approach to the team, where they just financially were 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 running the team, but they weren't having anything to do with it too much. It was more of a hobby for them, and they let us know that coming in, but that, they were our best choice, and we didn't really have many other options, and they were the best choice at the time, and we thanked them for everything that they did for us. So, With, with, that, with that said, the first time that I met um, Murdy, who was one of the owners, he told me, he's, he's like, Ken, you, you, if, you, if you feel like you need to... If you feel like the team needs any changes, you know, blah, blah, blah. I want you to talk to the team and, you know, get that done now. And everyone, everyone that I, like, even when, like, I remember one time, like, Patoy came up to me. And this is when I didn't even know Patoy very well. Like, we, like I knew who he was, but I don't think we've ever even spoke before. Um, he just came up to me and he's like, wow, did you see Muffins play right there? It was really bad. That's, like, really, really bad. And I was like, I know. And, and I, and I just had all kinds of people coming up to me and telling me that stuff. And I was just in, it, it, it didn't influence my opinion on Muffin because just since the beginning, I've never considered him a top player. And I considered everyone else on the team could potentially be some of the best players in the U S if not the best. So I knew that if we wanted to be a top team, we had to get rid of Muffin and the, everyone on the team, they, Everyone that I talked to, everyone except Smithy. I talked to Zuna, Psycho Sid, and Man Cloud, and they all agreed with me that they wanted. They said if we could get Bloodwater, it would be a great switch. So there were there were talks. There were talks with players, and Bloodwater was the first choice that we wanted, and we were lucky to get him. 
So so as soon as as soon as we got Bloodwater to sign on, we we told Blo we told Muffin that we were gonna let him go, and then that was just that was the end of that. It was it was one hundred percent performance related. It had nothing to do with. I didn't really have any ill will towards Muffin. It was just I wanted to get better as a team, and the team wanted to get better, and that that was pretty much that whole situation. That's it. And then let's talking about the end of our first split. It was, we ended fifth, which was not, it wasn't, um, it, we, we finished, we figured that we could at least finish top four. Fifth was the worst that we wanted to do. And in going into it, like starting 05, fifth wasn't that bad, but we always felt like, like we could do better. And during the, during the playoffs, we played, it was just like, again, in the playoffs, we did not, we didn't play very well. We played, like, against TSM and Curse. We just straight up tried to gimmick the first game, and we threw both games, and we still we still ended up taking a game off TSM, and we and we still beat Curse, even though we didn't, um, we didn't play, we just didn't play the, the first game in both those series on, on comps that we've ever run before. We just tried to gimmick both of them, and we still happened... And then we fell back. We fell back to what worked, and we were lucky enough to beat, to beat Curse and finish third. The, the, I guess the, not the happiest that I've ever been in LOL, but the happiest that I've been at that time was when we beat CLG, because, that just meant we had job security and we we're back in the LCS. So that was a great feeling at that time, and just the, just to beat, for for us to beat out Double as Vane with Zuna's Trist was was pretty cool for me too because everyone was always talking about how great Doublest Vane was and then they they just they kind of no respected us and gave us Trist all three games and that was that was part of their downfall and it it was just it was a great it was a great feeling to be back into the LCS and to beat one of the big names which was CLG at the time and then so after after that we had a big celebration dinner and we we talked about the next split and we had some vacation time me and Zuno went back to Vegas for a little bit, I think, a week or two, not not too long, and then we we got right back into it. We got right back into the thick of things and just started practicing for the next split. And then our expectations, the second split. I just remember, I remember talking to uh, Zuna, and I was like, Chris, how what what how good do you think we're gonna do this season? He's like. He's like, we have no reason now that we can't be top two, and I was, I, I was like, I one hundred percent agree with you. We should, we should easily be top two. That's, I, I did personally, I didn't know how good C nine was gonna be, but they, they're really good, and it was a bit surprising to me because I didn't pay attention to the challenger scene at all. So, so it, it that, that's how that, that first, the, the beginning of the second split started for, for me, and then our, our performance. It, it didn't start out too well. I think we started 3-2 in the first week, and we dropped a game to Coast, who we feel is a lot weaker than us. And it, it just it wasn't the greatest start for us. But we we picked it up, and we we uh, we managed to finish the league. We managed to finish the season in second place, which meant we had job secured again, which was a great feeling again. So we knew we were going to go into the next split. And once once the top two goal was reached which was our goal at the beginning of the second split. Our next goal was to make it to Worlds. So we knew we needed to perform at PAX, and when we played against TSM, we didn't underestimate them, but but we just played really bad, and we fell to the pressure, and just we got outperformed and outplayed. And it just, we weren't, we weren't playing our best, and we just, it, it, was, it was just TSM's time, and they won the game. They were better at that time. So they deserve to win. And then we played against Dignitas the next day, and then we were just like, you know what? If if we lo if we lose to Dignitas, we just don't deserve to go to Worlds because we're four zero against these guys, and they they don't they can't choose if they beat us. It's if we if we perform badly, we can lose. But if we perform if we performed on our game, there's no way we can lose. So we would have to, it, it wasn't in their hands it was in our hands whether we would make it through or not and we we played good enough to beat them and, and when we went to world and we made it to worlds which was a which was a great feeling to be one of the you know be included in one of the best teams in the world which is pretty awesome 
let's talk about Worlds. So, as you know, Worlds didn't go great for any of the NA teams. I, I think, I still think we performed, it, it, I don't know, I wouldn't exactly say we, I don't know if you could say we performed the best, but we performed, we did perform okay at Worlds. I know we're a lot better than we performed. But, I mean, it, maybe it's just the, the big stage. We ha we can't perform our best all the time yet. That's just something we're going to have to learn together. Uh, we beat we beat Fnatic. We went one-on-one -on -one with Fnatic, so that was a pretty good feeling. If you watched if you watched uh, one of our games against Ozone, we were destroying them, and then uh, the, uh, we just had a Shen bug, and the Shen, just, the Shen ult didn't go through, and we, we just straight up lost a fight, and they got fed off that fight, and then we kept on getting caught... Are just we were demoralized after that after the shen bug didn't work and we weren't strong enough to pull it back so so that's why we lost it's it's i'm not making an excuse it, it, it's 100 percent a bug though and that's if if there's a bug in the game like that it's riot's fault psycho Sid didn't he didn't right click or spam flash he didn't do anything that would cause that and even there, there should just like if a, if a character like shen can have a game changing bug like that he shouldn't even be allowed in a in a game in my opinion so so yeah, still a little bit salty about that, but I mean it happens. Like, what are you gonna do about it? You can't do anything. I think it was it was really shady on Riot's part though, how they just like, even after the cast the analyst desk, they started talking about it. They just like they shied away from it and they tried to hide it and they didn't show it at all. It was kind of it was kind of shady on their part, but I mean I guess they don't want to be highlighting a bug. But yeah, then we played, we played against the second game that we played against, um, Gambit. We were just completely destroying them. The game was free, but I just had I had this feeling we were just gonna throw it because everyone was just such in a bad mood from the game before. So like, it, I think it's just it proves that if we can get to that point that like there's no team, no there's no way that we can't be. We're already one of the top teams in the world, but there's no way we can't be at the top of the top if we don't if we just fix our mistakes and just stop throwing games because they're just they're just really stupid mistakes like. What we're we're trying our best to fix them, and we're just gonna try to keep on getting better because that's all we can do. I think, I think uh, performance wise for our team though, during Worlds, I think Cloud easily proved that he was he's one of the best mids in the world. I think he proved that. Zuna played he played really well at Worlds, and he probably had the him and Cloud probably performed the best on the team. Smithy Smithy and um, Benny they threw they threw a few games. But they 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 performed well. Besides that, and Blood is pretty solid all the time. He had he had a few misplays that led to some some bad things. But we 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 all we all need to just play better, and and hopefully we'll just get better as a team. Um, we we have obviously everyone's seen on Reddit. We have a new owner. They they which is it's actually hopefully it's going to be a great thing for the team because, like I stated earlier, the the old owners, they were just, uh, it was more of a hobby for them, and they, and now that our, we have a new owner, he's going to be more, he's going to be more with, like, helping the team out, and being not, not that, like, just financial aid, he's actually going to be trying to build the team, and help us build our name as a brand, and it's, it's, hopefully it'll be great, and then, I don't know if anyone's heard, but we have, we hired a new in-house manager, because one of the big things that was getting on me, last the whole last season of lcs was i had to do a lot of um house mom type things that i didn't want to do or and shouldn't be doing as a coach so now we have we have a manager that's gonna pretty much anything that's out of the game he's gonna handle for us that's that's the whole plan anyway and gnome we moved i think i'm not 100 percent what she's doing now but you can ask her i'm sure she'll tell you she's still involved with the team as well and then so for future plans, what what we've been doing and what we're doing, what we plan on doing, um, me and Zuna are vacationing in Vegas right now. We're gonna be here till December fifth, so no scrims with us until December sixth or seventh probably. And as soon as we get back, we're gonna start up our new schedule that we're gonna probably be using for the next LCS, and we we will have our full roster for the next the next LCS split, to my knowledge anyway. And next next split, next LCS, I'm I'm just expecting to stay top two. That's the goal, you know. 
there's I just want to obviously being rank one would be nice, but I like to be realistic and staying top two would be great for the first split and then just making it back to worlds again would just would just be a great a great feeling and a great accomplishment. I think if we can make it back to worlds again next year and just do better than we did this year, it'll it'll be it'll be a good feel for me I think and hopefully like we want to I know man cloud has been starting to stream a lot more and Zuna is starting to stream so be sure to check both of them out I think I think Benny and Smithy are streaming as well I'm not sure 100 percent so be sure to give love to all the players and uh check out our streams we're gonna try to do we'll probably do a fan meet in California in December once we get back and we're gonna try to be we're gonna try to reach out more to the fans and just just be more have more social media out for you guys and just be more in touch with you guys because we know that's what you've been uh that's what you guys deserve so yeah that's uh that's it for me now like subscribe and share this um i'll talk to you guys next time thanks bye